Good afternoon. Um, I'm Clara Nashted, and I'm the director of the Coordinated Science Lab, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here to our second uh, uh, award uh, ceremony of the CSL PhD thesis award. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the awards committee, uh, led by Professor Bruce Hayek uh, and uh, his colleagues who have been reviewing many applications very thoroughly and uh, put forward then uh, um, our rec the recommendation towards our speaker today. Um, this event truly is not possible without the hard work of, uh, of the awards committee. Just to let you know, this particular award started um, as a seat sought uh, among the CSL leadership in 2015. We have been discussing the amazing work uh, of the students, doctoral students here in the CSL lab. And as we all know, you spend a lot of hours in the research lab bringing up new ideas and um, thinking of many contributions so that then make CSL really excellent laboratory. And so this award was actually established to reward uh, all the hard work, uh, and that was in our mind. So it is this year, it's the second year that we are uh, giving out the CSL PhD thesis award and want to recognize uh, excellence in disciplinary research, uh, but through interdisciplinary solutions that address many societal problems as we are seeing it also uh, by Dr. Shi. So this year we had a very strong pool of candidates and uh, um, awards committee. Uh, uh, had really difficult time to uh, select um, uh, the winner out of numerous PhD theses deposited in 2016. And um, I would like to ask uh, uh, Professor Bruce Hayek to talk about the selection criteria of the awards committee. Thank you, Clara. Uh, yes, the, uh, the the award uh, call for nominations is on the web, and so the, the selection committee used the, exactly the criteria from that's on the, the website. We didn't uh, come up with our own separate criteria. So I just go through those. It says CSL seeks to leverage excellence in disciplinary research to have a societal impact through interdisciplinary solutions that address major societal problems. The CSL PhD thesis award will be given to a researcher whose PhD thesis makes advances in a disciplinary area that has an interdisciplinary angle. The selection committee will focus on candidates' contributions, innovative ideas, and potential impact resulting from their PhD work. So that's the complete marching orders that we took. We, we didn't uh, try to have some other thing that wouldn't be public. We think it's, it's fair to have the criteria be public and we just uh, go by that. And, and Professor Narstadt was correct. We had a lot of competition and we deliberated. There are six members of the committee that was appointed by the director and they represent broadly areas from CSL. And so it's a, quite a variety of topics that CSL covers and uh, the committee spent a lot of time looking to, into the different areas and debating. And, Xiao Min is our, our award recipient this year. So I'd like to, to um, mention a bit about her. Uh, her focus, uh, so, so I think a lot of this talk is going to be on things that she's worked on related to her thesis. Uh, she focuses on um, low overhead for communication control, load balancing, and locality or hierarchical locality of data in uh, data centers. So it combines a theoretical analysis and also she did implementation and Hadoop to, to check against state-of-the-art algorithms. Um, so, um, so all around it was a, it was a very impressive thesis and uh, a little bit more about Xiao Min. She, she graduated about 15 months ago. Uh, last fall she was at the Simon Institute and uh, she's currently a postdoc at MIT. And she has a, a, a several awards. Uh, one of her awards is a, a best paper award, uh, together with the professor uh, Yi Lu, and it was on uh, 
join the ILQ, a novel load balancing algorithm at Performance uh, 20, 2011. Okay, so uh, without further ado, I'll, I'll pre be presenting the award for, together with uh, Professor Narstedt. Come on up, come in. So the citation for the award is uh, presented to Xiaomin Xia for designing and building architectures and algorithms with rigorous performance guarantees for large scale networking systems. And there's a check here. A very large, it's a very large check. <laughs> Professor Liu, uh, Chairman's Chow, ad advisor, will introduce her. Well, thanks, Clara and Bruce. And yeah, first, congratulations, Xiaoming. <laughs> so uh, I've known Xiaoming since, um, well, actually, since I was a grad student. <laughs> I think she um, wrote to me, and um, she was asking me about networking research. And we started talking, and somehow I managed to convince her to come here with me. <laughs> so it was a great pleasure working with her ever since. Uh, we learned a lot together, and uh, I have seen her crack some real tough problems on the way. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and um, yeah, she, she's got all these awards, and now another one, right? <laughs> so um, I'm going to tell you the secret of um, how to solve hard problems. So for most problems, um, the no big deal one, okay, so to solve them just like the rest of us, um, sitting at our desk, pacing the corridor, um, cooking, or meditating, okay? Um, but for the real hard ones, you reserve them for the running time. <laughs> so that's how it goes. So if we are stuck at some really hard problem, okay, so she'll just tell me, okay, no problem. I'll go around 20 miles and let's talk after that. <laughs> so, yeah, you see? So, yeah, that's the spirit, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, again, uh, we are all very proud of you. And um, let's welcome Xiaoming and congratulate again. Thank you, Carl, uh, Bruce, and Drew. Thank you for awarding me this award. I'm so honored I'm hum and humbled to receive this award. And I would like to thank you, Luke, a lot. And I really enjoyed my PhD working with her. And thanks to my uh, PhD thesis committee, Bruce uh, Srikant and uh, Paul Mon. Yeah. So today, oh, hello. This so today I'm going to present my thesis work, uh, resource allocation in data center. I will, uh, so in this talk, I will mainly focus on my thesis work. And if time allowed, I would like to pre present the part of the extension work after uh, I have done after, I, after my graduation. So let's get started. So we know an increasing variety of services are offered while data center including like search, uh, social network videos, the services. And typically, these uh, services involve processing of large volumes of data of different forms. And these data are stored in the data center. And so this will bring challenges on both the storage, computation, and the boundaries. So for instance, in 2014, it estimates that the Google have uh, 15 exabytes data stored in the, in the data center. So do you know how much is exabytes? One exabyte is about one billion terabytes. So you can imagine how large this number is. And also this gives the number, estimate the number of data among the data process data in the data center. So we see this is the huge numbers of data either stored and processed. And this, the emergency of big data indeed uh, pose some challenges on the management of the network, in particular resource, man resource management, spending, storage, computation, and the boundary. So in this talk, I will focus on 
uh, the computation resource and the bandwidth resource allocation. And so for service provided in the data center now, uh, data center network, so a key performance objective really is low latency. Latency is crucial. So for instance, it estimates even a little bit increased in the search delay will result a huge amount of revenue. So maybe here 1.2 percent seems to, seems to small, but consider the total avenues for these two companies. This will be a huge, uh, a large number, right? So, so for these problems, and we would like to see what's the challenging and what's the opportunity here. So here is the story. Let's get started with the data processing system. So we know previously compute, uh, computation and the storage was separate and connected while the network. So whenever the data is needed, the computing say, hey, storage, give me the data. And we all know what happened. So a huge amount of data grows. So this makes the data, uh, the network become the bottleneck. So this motivates the design of today's the data center. So commodity servers are used for storage and the computing is moved to data. This eliminates the network bottleneck. And we know in data center network, these, uh, there is a large number of server units here. And typically, the servers are grouped into racks and connected via a, a couple of tiers of switches for communication to support the uh, distributed computation. So before getting to the data processing part, let's first look at the uh, data storage system. So we know that in data center, usually it's a large data file is divided into small data blocks. So for instance, a data file is uh, divided into two blocks, and it typically each data block is of fixed size. It can be com it's configurable, maybe 256 megabytes, and this data block are spread across the system. And for, uh, to, uh, for fault tolerance and availability, usually each data block is replicated a few times on the servers in the system. So for instance, in Hadoop, the default uh, replication factor is three for each data rep, for each data block. And so now with this distributed data block, we can process this data file in parallel. So for instance, the consider the processing the data file we just we just uh, uh, we just saw there. Then this become so the processing of this data file file is actually a job. Let's consider two tasks: one process data block A, and the other process data block B. And then these two tasks can be processed by servers in the system in parallel. And a problem here is around each task can be processed by any server in the system. They can be processed, uh, they will uh, experience a difference the service time due to the data, loca uh, data location. So I will explain to what does this mean. So for instance, for tax A, so for simplicity, assumes this is the underlying file system. We have a few data blocks that are spread across the system. And then we have uh, two tasks, one process data block A and the other for data block B. And for tax A, okay, so say, it can be processed by any of these two servers. Then, since the data is in the local, so for simplicity, here assumes the data is stored in the local disk. Then, if it's assigned to any of these two servers, this, uh, to process this task, the server can just fetch the data from the local disk and then start the processing. And now, for instance, if it's assigned to this server, now before processing task A, Actually, the, the server needs to fetch the data block A before it starts processing. Intuitively, this will increase the processing time for task A. And what about these two servers? Now before processing, say, this server, now before processing, it needs to fetch the data again. And now we can see due to, uh, in this uh, data center architecture, in, since the data is in a different rack, so the data block actually need to go through a multiple hop. So in theory, this will increase the process time even more. So we can see, depending on the data is in the local disk, like local or remote, task can experience or require the different amount of time. So this is the data locality problems. 
And similarly for tax B, it can be served locally by this server when the data is in locally, or rack locally, or remotely by these three servers. So we can see actually the distributed of this data block actually results in a, a highly uh, heterogeneous processing system for list of data processing tasks. So then the question here is, uh, as, as we can see at this moment, we can see for these to assign, uh, to assign the uh, results for this data processing task, there are indeed the two components here. One is how can we decide, uh, one is the task scheduling. What do I mean here is you need to select which server to serve to each task. This is the uh, part of, this is uh, the main part of my thesis work. Another part is the net, work, uh, net traffic control. We, as you have seen, if the data is in, not in the local disk, sometimes the data need to go through the, uh, the data, uh, data center fabric to fetch the data. So some, um, and each endpoint has some flows to be, to be sent, uh, to be sent. So they compete the bandwidth, the resource within the data, sem uh, data center here. So basically here are two components here, and this is the work I've done uh, recently. So uh, the first part, I will focus on the task scheduling problem with data locality constraint. And um, to make these two problems, uh, to make these problems trackable, so I will decouple these two problems. In the first part, so we know there are some data locality constraint. We we can see the details scheduling or uh, re, uh, boundary allocation here. Instead, we model the, uh, by different the service time depending on the data location. Uh, data, uh, data location. Uh, so we assume that, so assume this is underlying system. We assume that, we just assume, okay, the service time for the uh, task will increase uh, as, the di uh, as the distance of the uh, data increase. So meaning, the service time for local is less than rack local and the remote. And so here I illustrate this kind of like three level data locality here. But in real system, th this, the problem can be more complicated because the, there are sometimes, so say there can be exist, there can exist other levels of data locality. So sometimes data is not, uh, is not stored in the local disk, but in the uh, cached in a memory. So we can image it, it can process this task even faster compared to local. And sometimes the data may be stored in a different data center. So there can be multiple uh, levels of data locality here. And so for these questions, oops. so for these questions, the what we are interested in with this data with different level of data locality, how can we assign how, what kind of algorithm we would like to use to, this, uh, to schedule tasks. And it's interesting that these, so the scheduling in our, in our system actually can, is similar to the classical affinity scheduling. That is the scheduling for multi-class parallel server system. So tasks of different types arrive at a system statistically. And uh, the service times for each task depend on the tax, and tax type and the server pair. So assumes here that it's kind of like the service time, the mu ij, denotes the different service rates for different type, uh, for type i task and by server j. So, it, so we call that, now consider how can we you how can, uh, how does the, our pro scheduling problem fit into this framework? So, it, so we cross-list in our problem, the data processing time depends on the data location. So an intuitive idea is to define the task type by the data location. So for instance, we say a task of type two, five, and six, if this task requires a data block, we three replicas as server two, five, and six. And for this means task that requires a data block, uh, with three replicas as several four, seven, and eight, and so on. And we know in, so for instance, in Hadoop, typically each data block, uh, so the system randomly chooses three server to store the three replicas. 
So roughly, the number of tax types in the system will be the n power uh, a cubic number of servers in the system. n is the number of servers here. And another thing is in in data center, typically it's in, it's difficult to estimate the arrival rate of each tax type. So these two features towards new challenge on the algorithm design for our system. So up to this point, any question? So the question we asked ask here, so we list constraints. Can we design some algorithm, uh, scheduling algorithm that achieves high throughput and the low latency for all traffic scenario without knowing the arrival rates? So a short answer is yes. Indeed, uh, we, we propose some, uh, we, the proposed algorithms that achieves throughput to optimality and the delayed optimality in the heavy traffic regime. And our uh, experiment shows that, um, pre a pretty good performance at general loads in, uh, in a, uh, instead of the heavy traffic regime. So some of you might wonder why we are interested in heavy traffic regime. So you may say, okay, today's data center typically runs at a new low utilization, maybe about like 20 or 30 percent. So think about it. When you build a bridge, you would like to, when you like to test how well it's, it's, it's does, you would like to test its limits in the thunderstorm other than the normal days, right? So similar, so in this sense that we are interested in the heavy traffic regime. And, in, and I think another thing is in data center, so currently the reasons why it's launched at pretty low the utilization is because the low uh, is the due to the algorithms now implemented in the system. They have very small uh, throughput uh, capacity region. So even a little bit increased in, in the load will result in a dr uh, drastic increase in the delay. That's why people are scared of increasing the, uh, running the system at a high load. So image if we have some nice algorithm, let's achieve a, a pretty good performance at all load and even at a, even up to, so achieves the, the large possible the, uh, capacity region and, and achieves good performance at even a high load region. And then there's a high hope that it will perform well at all ordinary load as well. So before, before um, we get into the delay performance, I will introduce the notion of capacity region and the throughput to optimality. So here, let's use lambda L bar to denote the arrival rates of type L uh, bus tasks. So for a system with so many different types of tasks, the system to capacity regions can be, can, can be quite complicated. And the meaning of uh, the difference, so, so for instance, a point here that's within the capacity region may represent uh, a situation where load is evenly distributed among servers. And, may, and but, some, but sometimes the, server, the load on the servers can be highly skewed. Let's indeed happen in data center network. So some servers may store the highly popular data file or maybe store some quite a number of moderately populated files. And this makes some servers become hot spots. And while some other servers store like kind of like cold data, but the system to own, uh, overall is, uh, uh, is stable, meaning some servers here can actually can provide to try to help uh, reduce, uh, try to help some arrivals here to make the system to overall stable. So when we say an algorithm is throughput optimal, meaning for any arrival rate within the capacity region, the system is, uh, the system is stable. So in some sense, so consider if the underlying system can be modeled as a Markov chain, then the by stability, I mean the, the Markov chain is positive recurrent. So for a queuing system, typically it means the queue length does not grow up to infinity. It remains the bounded. So, but the throughput here is an, is an important uh, performance metric. But it only tells us, okay, it's bounded. But it does, we have no idea 
how large is the Q length? So that means we don't know the delay. So we are more interested in delay. And um, according to Little's law, starting delay is essentially the same as the starting Q length, since these two are linearly related to each other. So we are interested in Q length here. And the heavy traffic regimes here, I mean, the, the load is approaching the capacity boundary. So here, epsilon is uh, characterized the heavy traffic parameter. Let's characterize the distance of the current load from the capacity boundary. So if we let epsilon goes to zero, meaning the, arrival, the load goes to the system capacity boundary. And we are interested in if we decrease the epsilon towards zero, how does the steady state Q length scaled? So for, from this, we say an algorithm is heavy traffic uh, delay optimal if it's minimized the average, uh, average delay at the arrival rate uh, approaching the capacity boundary. So that means the upper bound of the scaled Q length actually coincide uh, with a universal lower bound. So the universal lower bound is actually when all servers capacity, uh, all, service, uh, all resources are pulled together to become a giant single server. And if the upper bound coincides with a universal lower bound, then we know it's optimal in heavy traffic region. So uh, up to this point, uh, any question? Okay, let's, let's continue. So uh, we, have, we have seen that uh, the scheduling in our system can actually, uh, is actually uh, uh, affinity scheduling. And this model has been well studied in literature. So there are two main lines of work. One is uh, the fluid model planning. So here, they requires the knowledge of the arrival rates to compute the optimal algorithm that achieve, that minimize the linear cost in terms of Q length. And so this means whenever the, the load for a system uh, change, they need to recompute the scheduling algorithm to achieve the optimality. And another line of work is the uh, max weight algorithm. Uh, so this work, so the nice thing about max weight is that it's not required any information of the arrival rate here. But instead of minimize the linear cost, they minimize some kind of like nonlinear or convex uh, functions in terms of Q length. So this two length work leaves the, the problem of un minimize linear delay without knowing arrival rate and open problem. And in our setting, we call that we have uh, like n cubic number of uh, tax type. So it's difficult to keep one Q per tax type as prior work. And this is the, like, kind of like the practical concern here. So um, I, I should mention last, uh, for these problems, Weina, who is sitting here, they were the first ones to model the data processing tax from a stochastic perspective. So they, they can see the case with two level locality and the proposed uh, new queuing structure instead of one queue per tax type, but one queue per server. And they use some algorithms that's uh, including the joint the shortest queue routing and the max weight scheduling. And the algorithm is throughput optimal and also heavy traffic optimal. But only, the, but the, but it's only optimal, the delay optimal only for a special case. And the, it's, it's the case where either a, a server receives none, uh, zero load or uh, the server is overloaded. And our algorithm, compared to this, our algorithm is uh, delay optimal for all general traffic uh, scenario. So uh, next, I, I will present our approach to this problem. And we start with uh, a simple setting with two level locality. I will uh, explain this. And then we propose the algorithm that achieves throughput optimal and heavy traffic optimal. And then we can see the more interesting case with a multi-level locality. So in this talk here, I will focus on two-level locality to give a flavor to what our 
approach towards this problem. And so, so we caught, so give a brief review to our model here. So here now we can see the two level locality meaning. So for instance, for tux of type two, five, and six, is the three replicas that serve two, five, and six. So then it will be served by its local server two, five, and six at a faster speed, uh, whilst we are slower speed at all other servers. So here we don't consider a rack locality here. So some ser servers with the data in the local list is processed faster, and any other servers are processed at a slower service rate. So for this problem, instead, so as I mentioned, we have the explosive number of tax type here. So we cannot use the one tax per queue, uh, one queue per tax type. Instead, we use the one queue per server here. So our algorithm, so we propose an algorithm called Pandas, priority algorithm for near data scheduling. So the algorithm consists of two parts. One is routing and the other is scheduling. So for the routing, we use the join the shortest queues uh, routing. So for instance, when the task of type one, two, three arrives at a system, it will come, the system, the scheduler will compile the queue length of the three local servers, which are Q1, Q2, and Q3 here, and then join the shortest one, which is to Q2 in this example. And while the for the scheduling, we use simple uh, prioritizer uh, policy. So meaning it always give priority to text from its local queue. For instance, when server one becomes idle, it will always first check whether its local queue is empty or not. If it is not empty, like the like example here, it will start serving one local text from its local queue. And what if the server find an empty local queue, then we are is that is served the longest queue in the system. For instance, like the uh, queue uh, server N here, when it's become idle, the queue is empty, and assume Q3 is the maximum queue in the system. Then it will grab a uh, task from the longest queue here and uh, start serving. And this is will be a remote task that runs at a slower service rate. And for this simple algorithm, we can prove that the algorithm, uh, it is throughput optimal, meaning for any arrival rate within the capacity region, the system is stable. So meaning the total queue length is bounded. And we also put the algorithm is heavy traffic optimal. So in particular here, we showed that the heavy traffic scale, the queue length, actually coincide with a lower bound. So the lower bound here is achieved by a, a single server with all resources pulling together. And the sigma here is actually, uh, Sigma square is the sum of variance of arrival process. And the uh, uh, new here, new square here, is the sum of variance of service process here. And in this way, so we, uh, we means, in this sense, our algorithms is heavy traffic delay optimal. So here I will give a little bit uh, highlights of our our proofs for the uh, heavy traffic optimality. And we used the uh, the Apollo drift method that developed by Srikant and causes the uh, Attila Ayumas. Uh, so there are three main steps here. The first step is to uh, to to, uh, to to get a lower bound for the system. So the idea is to construct a single server that's so that is statistically dominated by our original system. And for, the, and for the single server system, we can use Kingman bound to obtain, the lower, uh, to obtain the lower bound. And then the second step is to uh, establish state space and then use this state space to derive a matching upper bound. And in this way, we can establish this uh, heavy traffic delay optimality. And so, um, I will explain what, what the state space collapse mean here. So here we know the system states in our system, consider a system of n queues. Then the system states is actually uh, n dimensional vector. And then we say the system states uh, collapse to a, no, a fixed vector C 
in, in this sense. So this is, say this is the system state Q, and then the cube, and, and we denote the projection of this Q, of this uh, vector to this, uh, to C here as Q parallel components. And then the remaining part here, we call it its, uh, perpendicular components. And if we can show that the perpendicular components, any moments of perpendicular components is bounded by some constants, that does not depend on the heavy traffic of parameter epsilon. So meaning if we let epsilon goes to zero, we know the Q length will go to infinity, right? Then meaning these pa uh, perpendicular uh, parallel components will become bigger and bigger, while this part remains constant. So it becomes negligible compared to these uh, parallel, uh, the parallel components. So this is, in this sense, we say the system state collapse to this vector C here. Uh, that's the uh, space space collapse to, uh, make sense to you? Any question? Okay, so then the question, how can we prove the state space collapse? So the key idea is to construct uh, the upper function with respect to the per uh, perpendicular component and then used uh, extremely powerful lemon by Bruce to establish the, the to, to show, if we can show that the upper function with these uh, uh, perpendicular components satisfy two conditions, one is bounded, one is negative to the drift, then we can show the, the uh, any moment of these per perpendicular components is bounded by some constants. Unfortunately, so for our setting, we fix priorities to algorithm. It's difficult to find uh, the upper function that satisfies these two functions. So I mean, uh, classical like uh, quadratic the upper function does not work in this setting. So we need new ideas. So our idea is to decompose the system into two parts, and then start and study these two systems separately. So I will explain what's these two subsystems. So if we, so given, so consider for a setting, okay, now we fix the arrival lo the load for the system. And according to the load, we, we know some servers will be underloaded and while some other servers will be overloaded. And then we call, we, uh, so we ideally to for this overloaded server, they should not help any other server, but should only focus on uh, its own arrive, uh, its own local load. So we call it its beneficiary. And while for these underloaded servers, intuitive after so first is will finish it, should finish its its local its own load, and then after finish its last, they have some capacity. So we let them to help other servers. So help the overloaded server. So we call them helpers. So here means that depending on the load for each server, we can categorize, we can uh, decompose the system to two, two parts. One is overloaded and then the other is underloaded. And then for the, and how can we show the state space for this system? So, oh, so actually I should remember, so here meaning helpers provide remote service while beneficial receives remote services. So then what's the state space uh, collapsed for this setting? So indeed we can show, so first the help uh, systems is, uni uh, is uniformly bounded, meaning the Q length of helpers here are bounded by, upper bounded by some constants. That does not depend on the heavy traffic parameter. So land means that uh, the scale the Q length of helpers goes to zero. And then the look at the beneficiary here. So intuitively, so we know the helpers, whenever they become the idle in our algorithm, it will have the longest queues in the system. So, so in, in this sense, they will try to help us to find, so remote service to find help here, will try to equalize the, the queue length of beneficiary. So meaning these queues become the equals in the heavy traffic region. So in this sense, I mean, the, our system states collapse to a one, a, a one dimensional vector with all ones for beneficiary. 
and the zero for help us. And this is the state, uh, the directions that our system collect to. And with this, we can show derived a matching upper bound to establish this heavy traffic optimality. Um, any questions about this result? Okay, now let's look at a more interesting uh, setting with multi-level locality. I don't have time to go over all the details, just give a little bit the highlights of algorithm and the results. So it's turned out that, so with the nice result of a true level locality, and, and direct idea is to just apply this, uh, extend this uh, uh, algorithm to multiple level locality. Unfortunately, uh, a direct uh, extension does not work. The system is not even throughput optimal. So we need new, uh, we kind of like d modified this algorithm. So we call that in our two level locality, each queue only receives the local tasks. In for multi-level locality, instead of only one uh, local task, we allowed a mix of tasks to, to each server, meaning each queue can receive both local, rec local, and the remote tasks. And we use, uh, we also, we also co-design the loading and the scheduling. For the loading parts, we use the weighted work loading. Let's show uh, some ideas of max weight, routing, uh, max weight algorithm to achieve throughput optimality. And for the scheduling, we still use to prioritize the scheduling. And we showed the same result for our algorithm in multi-level locality here. So now let's look at some uh, experiments. It's interesting to see this performance in real system, right? So we implement the algorithms in Hadoop and evaluate in a different environment, in, uh, including an Amazon EC2 with 100 nodes and a private, with a private cast with 28 nodes. So I should mention that here, we only consider two level locality because at that time, so the rack structure is not available at either Amazon EC2 or private cluster. So that's why we only consider two level locality. And we generate trace from the stream benchmark. So in particular, as I mentioned, the load for the data center can be uh, highly skewed. So in our uh, experiment, do we generate the trace with both uniformed and uh, skewed workload? So here is the results on Amazon EC2. So uh, we compared the pen, uh, our algorithm to we have do the FIFO scheduler. And here, the X axis here. So for each data point, uh, data point here, say the, the I point here, it's X, so here we used a sliding window with two, 230 jobs. So meaning a point here is average, is, uh, average is computing over 230 consecutive jobs right before the case job arrived at a system. So we can see, so before and the, le the left figure compares to the task completion time and the, the right figure here compares the job completion time. So we call that each job consists of multiple tasks. And uh, the completion uh, time of a job is actually determined by the last task of that job. And we can see, so before, so in, in this trace, before the six, hundreds jobs, we generate uniformly a uh, load of our servers. And we can see pandas uh, outperforms the FIFO a little bit and achieves uh, about like two fold improvements over FIFO for both task completion time and the job completion time. And whenever we uh, make, uh, whenever the load becomes skewed, then we can see that uh, sharp, uh, sharp increase of FIFO while our algorithms continues, uh, so uh, it alone uh, increased a little bit, but it achieves ab about 11 fold improvement compared to FIFO, similar to for a job completion time here as well. And we can see uh, similar improvements uh, for compared to have do the file scheduler in the private cluster. So we can see, so here we used a sliding window of 100 jobs. So we can see before the 300 jo uh, jobs here, uh, where the load is uniform, then we can see uh, our approach consistently 
also performed the complete the sales schedule and achieved about like four, uh, up to four uh, fourfold improvement. And whenever the load uh, become um, skewed and there are some hot spots in the system, then we can see that it's a significant uh, increase in the Hadoop the viral schedule and our improvement uh, is about like I think like more than eleven fold improvement here, and and compared to with the Hadoop five, we can see viral schedule recovers from the uh, hot spots quickly, leaving a peak here, and there is another peak at the end of the trace due to the second hot spot we generated in our trace. So here is the experiment. We also uh, compared our algorithms to we ZSQ uh, max weights proposed by a winner. So the both algorithms, uh, while simulation, both algorithms are still put optimal. And we can see, so over loads to medium load, the performance of these two algorithms are similar. While the above to mediums to high load, we can see there is a, a sharp increase of the JSQ max weights. This is because in the algorithm, so they kind of like pre assign the number of tasks that will be served remotely. So when load, uh, big, uh, when the load becomes a little bit higher, so the queues start building up. This results a significant number of tasks that are served remotely. That's why it makes these completion times similar to uh, the many results from the large number of remote tasks. So uh, I'm almost done through it. Uh, yeah. Uh, so when I become the idol, we just check the longest queue. Yes, yes, yeah. We keep, uh, so it's kind of like, uh, here is a centralized scheme. So you keep, so the schedule track all the key length information of all servers. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. So I think maybe, um, so an alternative approach is to instead of the tracking all queue lengths, maybe uh, tracking partials the queue lengths the information or use some like power of D-traces algorithm to, to reduce the, uh, the communication complexity. Yeah. Um, I was curious about uh, losses. Uh, some of these servers can go down, right? So for one of the well-known Super D media server. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. What happens to an IDOC when uh, certain percentage of servers go down? Seven percentage of server goes down. Percentage. Oh, I see. Uh, so if some server goes down, and here we consider like centralized control, so the system knows some server goes down. So actually there are some uh, coexisting system that maintains the recovery of uh, servers. And if it is current goes down, and I think the, the scheduler can stop uh, assigning tasks that's going to that server and try to re redistribute this to our servers. Yeah. Okay. And you have not measured uh, how long that kind of contact streak would last? Mm, not at least work, yeah. Okay. So I will briefly present our work on network traffic control. So, <coughs> so, our, so our approach, so first to we consider a, a general model for the data center fabric. So which can, so the data center fabric can be represented by a graph. So with some node and address. So each node here is actually represents some like servers here to, to transmit the packets in the, in, in within this network. And here, each flow type is defined by the lowest and, and the flow size. So for instance, <coughs> the host, uh, host uh, H2 here have some flows goes to different uh, 
endpoint. So for instance, the brown and the yellow flows goes to uh, flow, uh, H1, and the red flow goes to H4, and the green flows goes to uh, H6. And each flow can, uh, can be of different size, meaning is of different number of packets for transmission. And within the, so in the internal network for trans, uh, uh, it's operated in discrete time, meaning at each time slot, uh, at most uh, one, pa uh, one packet can be transmitted. So then the goal here is to how can we uh, design, so we know that in, as we have seen the from the previous uh, example, we know the, the communication, the latency for the data transfer have a significant impact on the uh, data processing tasks. So the goal here is how can we allocate this bandwidth at our resource to uh, different uh, data transfer to achieve the low latency. And here the latency critically uh, determined by the conjunction control and the scattering. So the conjunction control, so here I mean the end, so like the internet, so it means that the end point, so, so it determines the rate, at, the rate at which the end point injects the flows of different types into the network for transmission. And for us, a scattering part, meaning the, so many focused on the service discipline and the, and the uh, server within the network, meaning it's determined which package to be transferred first. So these two parts together to determine the latency performance of the system. And so previously, so we know the, the uh, the principle is uh, the design uh, in data center now it inherits uh, some uh, principles of the design for the internet, meaning so most of the congestion control and the scattering are distributed at the either at the end point of the switches. So, uh, but considering consider data center is fundamentally different from internet. In a foreign sense, it usually is under a single the administrative control meaning it's a controllable environment, other, uh, unlike the network. So this raises the possibility of centralized design for data center network. So indeed some, so indeed some uh, recent efforts, including the software-defined network and more recently work on um, flow scheduling and the, uh, and the congestion control, indeed shows the, uh, Empir uh, promising empirical performance. So this raised the question, so what kind of the performance that, uh, re, uh, with respect to delay we can achieve with such a centralized design? So maybe, so it's a challenging problem here. So maybe let's take one, uh, uh, take one step back. Instead of asking optimal performance, can we establish some baseline performance for such a system? Some baseline performance, meaning some performance that's achievable, a reasonable achievable for such a system. And such a baseline performance indeed provide an upper bound for any, uh, for algorithms that's uh, uh, achieved for uh, optimal algorithms for such a system. Uh, in particular here, we are interested in a hybrid model with flow level congestion control and the package scheduling. And uh, indeed, there has a very rich literature on related uh, problems. So, for either on package scheduling or congestion control, and more recently, um, the joint design of congestion control and the scheduling have been investigated. But most uh, existing work mainly focused on uh, throughput or stability performance, or some. Uh, delay performance in the heavy traffic region. And there are also a uh, variety of uh, protocols that are uh, proposed by system community. And, but, um, uh, but it's announced what kind of the baseline performance can be achieved for such a, with a joint, for the joint problem with congestion control and the scheduling. And I should uh, point out that for congestion control, uh, it has been pointed out the baseline performance Indeed, it can be achieved by uh, some algorithm called the stored and forward uh, uh, bandwidth allocation. 
So we are interested in establish, uh, establishing similar performance, similar, not the performance, the like a similar ideas of the baseline for the joint of the design of congestion control and the scattering. So uh, this slide uh, summarized our uh, contributions to, to this work. So we uh, designed a centralized policy that achieves the per flow end-to-end -end delay of the order of number of hops in the network and multiplied by the flow size and uh, over the gaps to capacity. So here we, our policy address both the congestion control part and the scheduling part. And here, uh, most prior work can see the flows list of unit size. Here we uh, can see the general setting where flows can be of uh, variables, the package size. And the result here is the per flow end-to-end -end delay bound instead of aggregate bound for all flows arriving at a system. And uh, the result is non-asymptotic in a sense we don't, assume, we don't consider like heavy traffic regime here. For any load that's, adm um, that's admissible in, in the system, the results hold. And the key idea of our results is to uh, emulate the continuous times the cost are reversible network as we are product form the sta uh, stationary distribution. So the crispy de uh, description of the product form enable us to derive the delayed performance. And then by emulation, our algorithm indeed emulation of such system for both congestion control and the scattering to derive the desired, um, the, the desired bound here. So uh, to sum up here, I uh, talk a little bit about uh, the, my work on resource allocation in data center. So we consider both computation, our uh, uh, resource and the communication res uh, and the network uh, the boundaries the resource here. We propose some uh, novel algorithm and establish a rigorous performance guarantee either the, uh, for the scheduling of data intensive applications to all, uh, all the network traffic control. And here uh, we also implement our algorithms to show they achieve uh, supreme the performance in all general. So uh, I would like to take the last few minutes to talk about uh, the work I've done to, during my PhD here and some problems that I'm, work, I'm working on now and I'm interested in my future, direct, uh, future work. So uh, my work, uh, broad, I'm broadly interested in computer and the network systems. And one theme of my work is to design the algorithms that re rigorous performance guarantee typically based on stochastic model that captures the characteristic of the underlying system, like the affinity scheduling for our data intensive applications here. Uh, so, <coughs> so the uh, techniques I, uh, in this line of work in both uh, stochastic system, twin theory and uh, applied probability. And I'm also interested in low complexity, uh, algorithm of low complexity Eventually, at the end of the day, we want some algorithm that not only have pretty good theoretical performance, but can also work very well in system. So it's important to make the, uh, uh, to keep in, when, the des when design algorithm, to keep in mind to design low complexity algorithm to make it implementable. So I apply, so my uh, PhD work mainly focused on applied of these tools to uh, data center network. So I have presented our work on data intensive applications. And uh, I also work on uh, the distributed load balancing for metadata servers. So the, we know that with the increasing uh, the uh, explosive approach of the customer request, uh, it's important to, it's highly desirable to have a 